Dude, so I'm trying to get shredded this summer. So I'm just going to cut all carbs. Oh, yeah? Yeah, everybody knows that carbs make you fat. So, you know, the easiest way to lose weight and lose body fat is just to just eliminate them all together. Naturally. Okay. We're doing Atkins? Um, what is this, 1999? <laughs> we hear this so often that it almost seems like it's accepted as a universal truth. But it's a total lie. Stick around to see why. Dun, dun, dun. Damn, that rhymed. All right, Reverend. It's Should a total make... lie, and you will find out why. Victor here. And Julian. And we're in Beef at Miami Lakes, right in front of La Vaquita, right next to the park where there's a dumpster. dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say next to the dumpster. That sounds horrible. And we're here today to talk about one of the most common questions we have and one of the most common myths, I'd say. And that's the obvious truth that carbs make you fat. Right? Super obvious. So we're talking about carbs, like everybody knows what they are. And carbs itself is a shortening of carbohydrates. I know that much. I don't know much, but I do know that much. This boy's smart. Yeah, you know. Uh, so can you tell the people at home, not me, because I obviously know what it is, but can you give us a crash course on what carbs are, the types of carbs, what they do to the body? For sure. We're not going to get overly into the technical details. We don't want to bore anybody. This isn't a, a biochemistry lesson. Uh, but it is important to make distinctions because when you say carbs, it's way too generalized of a term. Things as like fruits can be carbs and then like a piece of candy can be carbs. For There's sure. no way those two things fit into the same category. Exactly. So for the sake of simplicity, there are two basic categories of carbs, simple carbs and complex carbs. And those two categories are based off the actual structure of the carbohydrate when it's broken down in your body. Uh, some are like just simpler and the other ones have to be broken down, right? So simple are things like glucose, which I'm sure everybody knows about, fructose, things like that. And then of course, when you get into more modern processed type of carbs, those would be like candy and things like that. That would also be simple carbs. So what makes it complicated? So already that you... <laughs> Already you see a distinction between, even though they're in the same category, a fruit and a piece of candy is not the same thing. We're gonna talk about why in the future, but one thing that you guys need to know about is that the simple carbs are things that are easily broken down, are they spike your blood sugar a little bit more, which spikes your insulin response. We're gonna get into insulin in a little bit, so. And the one thing to note about the distinction between simple and complex carbs is that simple carbs, they typically create a more of a, a blood sugar response, a higher spike, which also spikes your insulin levels because insulin is what helps take that sugar and distribute it where it needs to go. So that's why if you're like diabetic or something like that, a doctor will probably advise you to not eat like simple sugars and candy and things like that because it's gonna create that blood spike and insulin and you already have an insulin problem. So you can see where the problems cetera, there lie. Cetera. So complex carbs are, they're like more chains. Like when you look at the, the chemistry of it, it's more chains. So your body actually has to break it down. So your body has to work a little bit harder to break that down into the simple ones because at the end of the day it gets broken down into pretty much the same things like it, your body uses glucose as fuel so you eat something like a, that's a complex carb and it breaks it down into that well, that's that instant fuel right that's that like the glucose you mean? Shot, yeah yeah for sure okay all right uh, potatoes rice corn beans right. greens right. potatoes tomatoes, tomatoes you name, you name it, it. <laughs> so what are some complex carbs can you give me some examples so these are your like your starches like your potatoes rice corn things like that Damn, everything i love yeah the good stuff i'm a complex guy i guess well yes and no i'm sure you like the simple stuff too i'm a simple man things like whole grains oats beans all of that stuff is, is more fibrous legumes legumes oh i just like saying that word is legumes. that how you say it? i have no idea i say legumes legumes eh, <clears throat> i like to throw a french swirl on it in honor um, of the olympics and then certain veggies, like a lot of veggies are, are high in, in fiber and, and carbs. And that's why, again, we make the distinction of you can't say carbs as this umbrella term because veggies are carbs, yeah, beans like, are carbs. Oh, you're cutting carbs, you're just not going to eat vegetables? Like, that, I don't know. That just, a lot of people are doing that these days, but I'm going to talk about why that's... Fuck. And we're we're going to talk that. about it. We're going to talk about everything we're here, folks. So a lot of these complex sources have a ton of vitamins and minerals and fiber helps with digestion. That's why you've probably heard like they recommend with old people or people who, are, who are, have digestive issues Prunes. to eat more fiber. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and the other thing is we talked about the simple sugars being leading to more of a spike. These complex carbs, they, because they take a little bit longer to digest, you don't get that like elevated glucose response. So it's a little bit better for your like to, for managing blood glucose levels. So diabetics, it's a little safer to eat these carbs. Definitely. Okay. And it's yeah. even better if you combine that with other nutrients and, and other things like protein. Which we discussed thoroughly 
in our, our last, last podcast. Last, last at this point. Last, last. Yeah. Last, last at this point. Two back. Two back. Well, let's get into the like the rule. What do, what do carbs do for your body? I have a buddy of mine who's doing keto, and he swears that you don't need carbs. I mean, technically, you don't need carbs, but I also don't need Hagen Dazs peanut butter chocolate ice cream. But, I do. but I do I really? I need it. I do. I need it for my I mental health. I require it. I require it. Ah. Uh, but seriously, you, do you need carbs? I guess you can argue no, but it is undoubtedly the body's preferred energy source. So there's, there's no doubt about that. Like your body and your brain love carbs. It's something that you could take and use immediately right away. Think about it as just like the best gasoline for your car. If your body was a car. I'll guzzle it down. Guzzle. Every time, once a podcast. Loop that. Once a podcast. Loop that and slow it down. So when you eat carbs, it breaks it down into ATP, which if you remember anything about uh, high school chemistry, ATP is, is the preferred energy source for cells, like at the cellular level. Um, and that's carbs right there. The brain alone actually consumes about 20% of the body's total like energy consumption. And most of that comes from glucose. So where do those people that are doing keto, where do they get that source? Of? Ah, we're going to get into it, my friend. We're going to get into it? We're, we are. We're going to get into it's, everything, guys. We are, we are. So how about when it comes to exercise? I know the body uses that fuel immediately while you're exercising. What do you do if you're cutting carbs or if you're doing keto? Well, so let's talk about why carbs are important for exercise. So the body stores sugar or glucose into glycogen. Glycogen is just like the stored version of it. It stores it in the liver and the muscles, a little bit in the bloodstream too, but mostly in the liver and muscles. Um, and that's the reason it does it because that's easy fuel. You start exercising, the body takes that, mobilizes it quickly, breaks it down, ATP, boom, you're going. Bottom of the Titanic, exactly, those guys going Exactly, in. so yeah. it's, it's crucial to have glycogen stores. This is why athletes carb load, like if you've heard of endurance athletes, they, they eat a lot of carbs before competition or something like that, because they're gonna be fueled up, they're gonna be gassed up, ready to go for the next day for that competition. And then when it comes to the type of exercise, that matters too. So high intensity exercise is almost exclusively fueled by carbohydrates. Uh, when it comes to endurance training, now you get into a little bit more of a fat oxidation, uh, metabolizing fat and using that as fuel. But like I just said, you still want to use carbohydrates as well. You're always using a combination of carbs and fat. It's only that when you lift weights, when you do sprints, something like that, you can't really use fat for that. You're using almost exclusively glucose and, and breaking down glycogen. So I guess ultimately the reason we even did this one is the, the myth of carbs making you fat. And without a doubt, we've seen evidence that cutting carbs can lead to fat loss. That's where the whole myth comes from. That's where all these older diets come from. So what's the deal with that? You're hundred percent right. And, and it is a fact that if you start cutting back on carbohydrates, you're going to lose weight and you lose it quickly. And the reason for that is actually pretty straightforward. Right. It's because so that's, it. that's where people stop listening. Like the people that want to hear uh, that, <laughs> like, okay, all right, he's right. Uh, uh, done. Right. Yeah. Okay. But if they're going to miss this important part where when you, when you consume carbs and the body breaks it down, we talked about that, but what we didn't talk about is that it binds to water, right? Every, every time you break down carbs and store them, you're storing it with water. So what happens is when you cut carbs, you're actually depleting yourself of water as well. So you're dehydrating your body a little bit and that water loss comes off. Like it's just shedding pounds off the scale, but that's not fat loss. Very important here. That is not body fat being lost. That is a lot of water weight. And that's why that, you know, those numbers just fly down, which is great to see. And yeah. that's why people love to cut cars because you just, you're shedding that weight off. But a lot of it is water weight. Yeah. So it's technically this it weight loss, but weight loss that you're going to retrieve as soon as you have, like, as soon as you're properly hydrated and it's not actual body fat loss, which is what we know what we're seeking. Not exactly. The traditional weight. And that's why here at BFIT, we always emphasize on fat loss and not weight loss. I think the weight, whole weight loss thing is, is not the right way to conceptualize it because like we've talked about in other podcasts, you can lose muscle, you can lose uh, water. So you don't want weight loss, folks. You want fat loss. You can start strength training, lose body fat and gain weight. And then like, what and is slim that? slim down. Yeah, like it's all, it can all get very confusing. So we just try to focus on the body fat. Yep, exactly. I don't like mans no more. Women, 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 women. Exactly. So why did this whole stigma of carbs making you fat? Like where did that all come from then? Because carbs are delicious. They are. And you're going to want to eat more of them. French fries and eating are so more, good. And eating more is going to make you fat.
So it's all a calorie thing. It's as simple as that. Now that you mentioned it, actually thinking it like every snack pretty much is a carb, isn't it? Like or every most popular snacks are sounds like beef jerky or a lot of them. Your pork rinds aren't. Hey, I love pork rinds. But uh, yeah, chips, uh, French fries, soda, everything like all these yep. popular cookies, yep. carbs. Damn. And that's why I think in a lot of people's mind, it is it sounds like obvious. But when they think of carbs, they think about everything you just said, but they don't think about broccoli and uh, Beans, lentils. They yeah, don't lentils, think about that. They don't fruits. think about like healthy stuff, fruits that are great. And if somebody tells you not to eat fruits because they have too much sugar. Fruits are way too high in sugar. Please like uppercut them like just oh. just a nice good. Get under the chin. Right under the chin. Give them a good one. Teach them a lesson. It's the most moronic thing ever. But on a more technical note, we already previously discussed how when you eat carbs, it gets broken down and then insulin is released and then that shuttles the glucose where it's supposed to be. Now, if you eat too many carbs, insulin is going to be like, all right, we're good. The muscles are good. The liver's good. Uh, What do I do with the rest of this? Right in that belly. Straight to that muffin top, baby. That's where it goes. I like it. So... Again, eating too much, overdoing it, the body's just gonna take that and store it. It looks at it as like, okay, reserves, like just fuel reserves. So it's not about the fact that carbs are bad, it's eating too much, eating too many, overdoing it. And then what happens too is the type of carbs matter. If you're eating, if you're having a lot of soft drinks or candy or or baked goods or processed things, you're spiking constantly your blood sugar spike, spike, insulin spike, insulin spike. What happens is you develop insulin sensitivity that is a precursor to diabetes that's when you become like you know you've heard of people like pre-diabetic or like okay now you're full-blown diabetic that is your body saying dude i've released so much insulin and you keep feeding me this crap i don't even know what to do with it anymore your body doesn't even respond to insulin anymore and now you've gotten to a point where you need to inject yourself with insulin to get rid of that because having those blood sugar spikes is not good are you attacking me with this or are we just informing no are you pre-diabetic no but i I would hope not i do it a lot of you also so little hack here if you lift weights if you lift a lot of weights and you exercise but definitely um lifting weights and doing high intensity work and if you're lean you have a huge advantage like your body is like a a machine for getting rid of carbs because your muscles absorb a lot of that stuff so it's a hack be lean folks just don't be fat yeah it's easy guys easy we know that so So what do you think makes these low carb diets so popular where they're always like, it seems like they're popping up a new one like every 10 years or so. For sure. Yeah. First it started with the Atkins and that was a whole thing. I don't want to get into the history of it, but it's actually really interesting if you look it up, like it was started by a doctor and all that. Is that the same as the South Beach diet? I'm not sure. Um, Can you guys correct us on that? The reason they're so popular is actually simple. It's because it's so much easier to eliminate an entire food group than it is to tell somebody, oh, you can eat everything, but in moderation. So it's the simplicity of it so simple and you know how many of my clients this works wonders with as soon as you tell them just don't eat any of that stuff like don't if it's a carb don't eat it they can stick to that but if i tell them dude you're gonna have a little bit of ice cream just don't have the whole pint you know have a few bites that doesn't work or you can have the pasta with the delicious pasta with a nice heavy cream but only try having half the portion like it's much better not better i should say it's much much easier. easier to adhere to saying no pasta at all like you just like out of sight, out of mind, yeah. you know, and you're just eating these things. For some reason, that just seems to be easier for people. Yeah, it's just easier to digest, no pun intended. Uh, easier for them to, like, process it, I guess. Also, is that not pun intended? Because the body processes? Anyway. Yeah, just things and puns. No, 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 I'm not. I'm just saying, like, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess, like, people just like simpler. Like, that's why keto's effective. Like, just, okay, we're cutting out all of it, and we're just going to eat fat. Like, easy. Let's face it. It's hard to control yourself when you're eating these delicious carbs that you mentioned before, like French fries, for example. I can eat an unlimited amount of them. I think I've said it. I've said it on this podcast before. I've seen it. Yeah. So uh, pizza, French fries, that kind of stuff. Chips. You open up a bag of chips. You're not just going to have a few chips. Look at the Pringles slogan. Once you pop, you can't stop. You You can't. That's cute Pringles. You really can't. If you want to sponsor us, though, we'll switch this podcast right over. My Pringles mustache. This will be a a, a chips only podcast. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> guys are so <laughs> now the thing about these low carb diets is that they're terrible for long-term sustainability how many people do you guys know that started keto or did keto it was going great and continued it long term oh no fuck hold on fuck. cutting yourself no i meant no I'm, i know i know but that's not bad man <laughs> shout out to cricket 
One of our Take great it. trainers here Take at the Fit Miami to Lakes. Somebody every single podcast. I like it. I like to shout them out. The rest of them that don't get shout out. <laughs> they will. It'll be your turn soon. Like Easy's and Rain. There you go. Wow. Easy's and Rain. Shout out to Easy's and Rain. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, this is one of my pet peeves as a trainer is when people say, oh, I did X, Y, Z and it worked great for me. But did it? Because... If you lost a bunch of weight and it, yeah, it worked great and you got results, but then you got off of it and then you got fatter or you gained it twice as fast, did it actually work for you? Like to me, if it's not sustainable, like I don't really care about a quick fix because what's the point if you're just gonna go right back? Yeah, and we know that these roller coasters, uh, roller coaster rides are for your body fat is not good in the long not term. Not good for your body. So it's better to find something sustainable in the long term that you could stick to hopefully for life. I think what people are, are trying to do with these is like, what can I do in the short term to lose weight for this cruise? And then I'll just go back to my regular diet. Like that's not how diet, even the term diet is like demonized now by our, by the industry because a diet should be something you do all the time. It's not a diet is not something you hop on and hop off. 100%. That's actually the definition of the word diet when it started. Like when you talk about like an animal's diet. Yeah, an animal's diet is every day. we made it into the stupidity yeah. of... Like giraffes don't go on a diet and now they're eating like eucalyptus only. Like they're just, that their diet is one thing. Be like a giraffe, folks. Yeah, have a long neck. One more thing about keto. Keto's Quest. I'm actually starting that channel. You guys follow Keto's Quest. <laughs> I'm also starting another one called Quinoa's Quest that I only taste quinoa. Quinoa's Keto Journey. It's going to suck. <laughs> and the other thing, back to the one of the original questions you asked me is, do you actually need carbs? Well, what's interesting about keto, for example, is that the reason it's called keto is because your body, without carbs, it goes into something called ketosis which is basically a, a state where your body is breaking down fat instead of carbs as a fuel. And your body can do that pretty efficiently. It's a lot of a slower process, but once you get into that state, now it's important. Once you're there, you can't reintroduce carbs because once you introduce carbs, the body's like, yeah, I'm out. screw that, I'm yeah. getting this. So, but once you are in ketosis, your body can actually use that as a fuel. It's not its preferred, but it can, what's good about it is you don't get those insulin spikes. You don't get the blood sugar spikes. It's a, so people report a little bit more of like a, feeling more more or less stable throughout the day which is nice good for mental clarity as well uh, however it can lead to certain deficiencies nutrient deficiencies because think about all the food groups you're el eliminating a lot of fiber you're not getting fruits whole grains a lot of things that are good for you um, think about it you're not eating any of that just pure fat and protein and does it also dehydrate you since you mentioned that carbs stick to water and when you're skipping carbs you're dehydrating yourself I, I would say as long as you're probably hydrating, that shouldn't be a problem. So you probably have to drink more water if you're on keto? I would think so. I would think so. Interesting. And then, of course, when it comes to exercise, there's no debate about this. Eating carbs is better for exercise. Now, there are bodybuilders and all kinds of people that are, like, impressive that are on keto, but that doesn't mean that it's the best way to do it. It's a way to do it. You can do it the same way that there's carnivore people that literally just eat beef, and they are thriving and doing well. But is that the best? debatable and i think the best is on a per person basis like if you can do keto for life and it works for you you'll be one of the only few i ever know but whatever i guess good for you if you don't ever want to eat a carb again but i think it's everything like all these diets are on a per person basis also can we talk about the practicality of it it sucks like some diets are just not practical no. like you so much of our social lives revolve around eating and if you have these crazy restrictions and you're you're that guy at the party i'm where, not inviting you I'm not. Shoot, I'm not going. I'm not. You're not invited to my house. And if you dare to bring some like, oh, these are like keto, cauliflower yeah. wings or something uh -huh. like that, I'm gonna kick these out so fast. <laughs> Please don't need that. Uh, speaking of exercise, most of the people listening to this podcast are are exercise. Active, you know? So I that extra <clears throat> fries. <laughs> so listeners or viewers of this podcast are probably or hopefully exercisers um sizers who exer um how would should they think in their relationship with carbs and exercise so like we've said a few times already carbs are your fuel source for the most part so just try to keep that in mind and make sure that your your tank is is full so to speak you know what's um, before i know you're probably gonna want to rant mm -hmm. um <laughs> i can tell i can see in your eyes you have that that glow so I, I think a good way to think about it before you you start is like these um these hybrid cars that have like short uh like for short trips they use the electric and for long trips they use the gas mm -hmm. uh wouldn't like the short trip be kind of like the where the carbs are coming into yeah you can think about it like that it's a little bit more complicated because that what i was just gonna say is that you can also exercise on a fasted state like there's nothing wrong with that 
and it depends again if you're just like a casual exerciser don't overthink it you really don't have to think about carving up for, before a workout like at all um just consider that you may feel more fatigued if you are running on empty so to speak and if you're fasted other people like myself i can work out early in the morning fasted no problem i have my carbs after because if you have them later on in the day you're still good to go it's not like i'm depleting myself completely yeah you gotta you know? look at the day mm -hmm. as like as the ch the day as a pie graph not Exactly. Oh, my carbs have to be in before a certain time. Like, as long as you complete all your macros at the end of the day, I think you're good. Yeah, you're not like an, an Olympics track star that has to be, you know, super, everything needs to be down to like the timing of like when you fuel up and making sure that you're fully, like your glycogen stores are full. For regular folks, like it's, it's, it's a non-issue. But just consider that, that carbs are fuel. So if let's say I'm planning on like a little bit of a harder workout in the afternoon, I'll make sure I have some, some more carbs uh, uh, at my meal. So... Now, if you're a more serious athlete, like an endurance athlete, you do triathlons or something like that, now you really got to think about your carb intake and they eat a high percentage of the diet is carbohydrate. And you've heard about carb loading, right? I'm sure everyone has, where you're literally eating a ton of carbs the day before a race or something like that. And then have you seen those little pouches that they consume during the race? That's it's a sick. simple sugar. Yeah, it's that's a, something that your body can just whoop, take and <laughs> just <laughs> run with it. Popeye. Oh, no pun intended. Yeah, there you go. So, but think about it, you're working out for hours, you know? Again, the average person doesn't have to worry about that, but it just goes to show when, when you get to that level, how important those little bits of like those little hacks and like giving your body a little bit of like an extra, you know, fuel source is important. Now, let's get into Gatorade and things like that. All right, because this is another pet peeve of mine. I'm a prime guy. Oh, is that a, the Paul Brothers one? Yeah. Sponsor mm. this guy. What a Gen Z or this guy is. I'm not. I'm just kidding. Um, the thing with Gatorade is, I would say, at least with like our segment of the population, they they definitely overdo it. Like Gatorade was designed for if you're Hangovers. out there, kind of. Yeah, I guess. Um, if you're out there for two, three hours sweating in this South Florida humidity, and you're losing a ton of water, and you're losing a ton of electrolytes, and again, you're sugar depleted. Guess what? Gatorade has the perfect mix, literally, scientifically, the perfect mix of glucose, of sugar, pure sugar, and electrolytes and water, right? So it's amazing if you're out there doing all that work. If you're inside in this 70 degree gym, um, lifting weights for an hour, you don't need Gatorade after your workout. In this comfortable, cooled, controlled environment. Controlled that we've environment, awesome here. place that we've created yeah. here, perfect temperature. I could see why you wouldn't need it in this perfect utopia of a workout yeah, and, facility. Yeah, and honestly, like, I feel like if you had to look at it, most people use Gatorade for all the wrong reasons. Like, kids, parents give it to their kids. I think some people have the, are under the illusion that it's healthy. A like, thousand percent. It, it's pure sugar, folks. Like, it's, it, the only w the reason it's good for is, again, if you're exercising intensely. Uh, but other than that, it's like, I would only use it if you're feeling dehydrated, you sweat a lot, you've been in the sun. That's about it. They're smart, though, because they label it as a sports drink. So it automatically associates with health, I guess, in some way. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie to you. I've had it, like, when I'm craving a soda or something, I'll have a Gatorade. And it's like, I know I'm, it's, I shouldn't be, but it tricks my mind, at least. Yeah. And I blame marketing for and it. And arguably, it is healthier than a soda. So if you want a lesser of two evils. What am I drinking? Guadana. Antarctica. They don't know about that. So let's say I just finished working out and I'm beat, I'm smoked, and I just used all my glycogen, my sugars are done. Should I immediately like get them back in me or how do I, how should I go about that? This is a great question because back in the day, we've talked about this in pre previous podcast, how things have changed, right? The whole anabolic window thing. So bodybuilders used to be like crazy about this, right? I don't know if you remember, we used to live together at mom's house. I had these, I bought these things that were like maltodextrin and dextrin. That's basically like <laughs> industrial grade, pure chemically, made sugar like at the simplest level it's the shit that goes straight into your <laughs> straight in your mind might as well have iv it to myself Yummy. bodybuilders used to get whey protein maltodextrin dextrin everything in there because sugar having sugar or some sort of like replenishing your glycogen stores with protein was shown to be the best for muscle recovery so bodybuilders took that and like all right let me do that um, we now know that that is that you don't have to exaggerate about that. I definitely would not suggest taking pure sugar with your protein shake after the workout. Um, but like I said earlier, you're going to fuel up during the day, right? Like just have a protein shake after your workout if you want to, or have lunch or have dinner, depending on the time that you train. 
and just make sure to include some carbs in that dinner or lunch or post-workout meal. Yeah, and I, you see a lot of people like, especially when I offer somebody like a pre-made shake here, either core power or muscle milk or something, they're always like, oh, but it has too many carbs. And I'm like, yeah, you need that after you just worked out. Like, stop demonizing the carb in your protein shake. We always suggest people throwing fruits into their shakes to, to balance it out more. Cause yeah, for It sure. was always like, oh, a protein shake. But really, we learned it should be a protein carby shake, like some protein with yes. some carbs thrown in there. Yeah, actually, when I was in grad school, um, I was surprised to learn that one of the best post-workout things that you can have, again, if you're an athlete, not, Say Joe, Sh- not Joe Schmo. Is it beer? No. Oh. Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk, yum. Chocolate milk because you get the sugar. It was supposed to be, a, I think, a three to one carb to protein ratio, which milk naturally has. And then the chocolate, you had even more carbs, more sugar. Again, if you're completely depleted. And then I would also add like actual whey protein to that because I don't think it's enough protein. But yeah. anyway, um, that was one of the things that like we would give our, at UM, we would give our football players like chocolate milk. Here you go. I wonder the program is struggling. Ah! <laughs> Just kidding, That's they're gonna have a good for. year. They're gonna have a good year. Uncalled Let's go. For, uncalled for. Oh. What you just said about having too much sugar in the protein shake leads me to an important point that I think everyone should know is that we we tend to focus on like the the, the little minutia. Yeah. And and instead of like you're missing out on the much bigger thing. Like you just worked out, you're having some some uh, protein shake with a little bit of sugar. That's not what's hurting you. That's not what killing your what's killing your game. What's killing your gains is Friday night when you had four beers and then you ended up going to one of these salchipan places and you ate a loaded hot dog and then you had dessert that's what's killing you that's a hundred grams of sugar not the six grams of sugar in your protein shake like get it out of your head that these little oh the fruit i don't eat mangoes because it has too much sugar sweetest dude it's not the mango i guarantee you it's not the mango let me look at your diet it's the other (laughs) things that you know you shouldn't be eating that are highly processed and and highly like calorically loaded it's not it's not the six grams of sugar in your shake and these these shakes are kind of designed to and then you could kind of shop around in that sense like they're not killing you with the calories it's like they're you know of course they have their 200 calories or so but it's dense it's like protein dense the carbs are like it's all there for you like you said it's not the cause it's definitely these are thought out like they're made this way for a reason and and if you want to do an experiment compare like let's say your average protein shake core power or something let's say it's 200 calories 26 grams of of protein and like let's say six grams of of sugar compare that to any other snack that you can go out and get right whether it's a bagel or uh, a tequeño for our miami folks or something like that 200 calories a lot of fat a lot of carbs almost no protein protein at all it's gonna go right through you it's mostly simple carbs compare it you know how many things can you get that are gonna give you that more bang for your buck for 200 calories you literally can't the only things that i go and i get a snack is like beef jerky and even so beef Mm. jerky you're not getting the you're not getting the same nutrients you're not getting the same amount of protein and you're gonna have to eat a shitload of it just to get a little bit of yeah and it has a good amount of carbs on this i like the turkey just because it's a little bit leaner. You're but, a jerker, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm a jerker. All right, so as always, if you made it this far, thank you. We appreciate you. We are going to get into the practical, practical. takeaways. takeaways. <laughs> I was together, but this is awkward. Uh, First thing I say is the type of carb matters. matters. Don't just say carbs. Sorry, I'm just guy. trying to finish each other. Finishing just sandwiches. Carbs. Oh. Um, <laughs> don't just say carbs. It's too too broad of an umbrella term. Like we just talked about, simple carbs, you try to limit those, you know, not not honey and fruit and things like that. Those are the good stuff. If, if it, okay, a good rule of thumb, if it if it exists in nature, you're, it's probably okay. So even things like honey, which you would think, Ayahuasca. oh, that's, that's pure, that's pure sugar, you know, but it's a healthier type of sugar. It's a naturally occurring sugar, even though it's simple. I would limit it anyway, but, you know, you want to sprinkle some... So yeah, honey on your the pool where like yeah i mean leave that for carlos yeah so shout out to carlos house. there's oh another shout out God. um he's never gonna hear this all right um so limit not i wouldn't even say the simple carbs because you can eat fruits and stuff like that but the processed simple carbs like those are the ones you really want to limit and then include a little bit more of the complex carbs and even within the complex like we're, we're simplifying here even within the complex, there's a lot of, there's differences, right? There's difference between white potato and sweet potato, white rice and brown rice. Or, um, so, but complex carbs for the most part tend to be a little bit more nutrient dense. Uh, your whole grains, your, um, your starches, things like that. Include more of those, less of the processed simple stuff.
The second takeaway is that balanced, having more balance in your diet is gonna lead to better long-term results. Like we talked about, if you do something that's really restrictive, yeah, you might lose weight fast. Like if I wanna cut carbs for the summer or whatever, I might lose weight fast, but I'm gonna gain it just as fast or even faster, which defeats the purpose. And let's face it, life kind of sucks without some of this stuff that you're, they're asking you to eliminate. You know, like what kind of life is it that you can't have a slice of pizza or, or some French fries from time to time? Yeah, and, and I think that whole bouncing back gets hard as we get older. Like sure, you can lose, uh, like shed the weight for the summer and you might put it on again, like you said, when the, when the summer's over and you start eating carbs again. That little cycle, by the time you hit late 30s, it's not that such easy to lose point. those carbs in the summer. That's such a good point. So and you're actually, just like, so you're just evolving into a bigger version of yourself every time. God, I think people could relate to that. And honestly, comment below if you'd like to see a whole episode on that, because I just gave me an idea of like, why does it get harder as you get older? And it's not that your metabolism slows down. That's a myth. Oh. So a little preview there. But yeah, comment if you want a, a whole episode on why it gets harder to like why you keep you know get gaining a little bit as you incrementally and then, little, and then it little. just gets harder like back in the day you could just lose it quickly and now it's like oh i really have to work hard for no this. milkshake and your ass jiggles for a week my ass doesn't jiggle i wish it did let me see Meh. <laughs> <laughs> and the last piece of advice is actually counterintuitive because it's be careful with everything the other advice that we just gave you what i mean by that is if you do have this balanced diet where you are allowing yourself to have some of these foods they are extremely tempting and extremely addictive, addictive for lack of a better word so if you are the type of person that says oh i can have everything in moderation it's like okay try having fries in moderation try having chips some people in moderation good. some people could i don't know how i know but that's not everyone so I you have to know can't. thyself i can't so my point being be careful with that. Don't use it as a free for all, you know? Like what I what we do in my household is if, if I don't wanna consume it, I don't buy it. So if I wanna have a, a little bit of each or whatever for when I wanna give myself something, then I'll have like some sources here and there, but I don't fill my pantry with all these things because guess what? On a binge, I'm just gonna and just start grabbing oh. things. So um, be careful is all I'm saying. Yeah, put it in a lockbox hide it somewhere <laughs> that way you have to like really go on a little mission to go find your snacks that's what i do in my household you joke about it but it's some people do need i'm a not joking box. i'm not some joking i'm not joking box. mine is in a piranha <clears throat> tank you got to put your hand in and at the bottom is like salt and vinegar chips i think the best piece of advice is like set rules for yourself you know like if you if you're into the whole cheat meal thing like how many cheat meals a week and it's not a cheat day it's a cheat meal um you know if you're into desserts like can I buy something that still satisfies my sweet craving and maybe does have a little bit of dark chocolate or something, but it's not like the super highly processed, you know, um, calorically dense food. So today we're gonna jump into a little Q&A. We had some of our clients and some of our followers shoot us some actually surprisingly good questions. Surprisingly. Thanks for that. We appreciate you putting in your input and we, we, we're happily going to answer these questions i didn't say surprisingly because i'm shocked <laughs> <laughs> i said surprisingly that we actually got a, a, a bunch of them that yep. was a surprise <clears throat> so anna low once says well do you <laughs> <laughs> um okay so vicky wants to know is it true that simple sugar as a pre-workout is a good way to get a quick boost of energy and that's become pretty popular uh i think it was a TikTok trend that kids were eating like a rice crispy because it was like loaded with sugar before a workout so I would say no, don't do that unless you're, again, unless you're a more serious athlete. But even even uh, with that, I would say complex carbs because you want sustained energy. Because remember, that quick boost, it goes like this in your bloodstream. For those who are watching, it spikes up and it goes right back down, right? So there's, I don't want to get into something crazy here, but something called rebound hypoglycemia, which if your blood sugar spikes and it goes back down quickly, then you have low blood sugar. So there's no need, especially for somebody like I know Vicky, she trains here. I know how much she works out. Um, as long as you're either fasted or you have like just a nice balanced meal with some complex carbs, then you'll be okay. No need to do that. Sorry, Vicky. No Rice Krispies. Uh, she also actually wanted to know, this is does a good one. it matter the type of carb? Uh, word a little confusing, but what she means <laughs> is added sugar versus natural sugar, uh, fiber versus empty carbs. Well, I hope we, we discuss that you know, in quite some detail with this podcast, but uh, I, obviously we can get into a lot more detail. The short answer is it definitely matters. Um, you can choose sources that are, she, she wrote empty calories, right? Empty carbs. Em yeah, that, that's a great point because you can have 
again, pure sugar that is just sugar, or you can have a fruit that is sugar, vitamin C, vitamin A, right? you know, uh, fiber. And by the way, don't juice it. Eat the whole fruit. You want to get that. with the peel on. Yeah, you want to. I eat it without chewing. Um, South Beach diet. Eat it. Eat the actual fiber of the fruit. So again, it's it's comparing two different things. One is definitely superior to another. So yes, there is such a thing as empty calories. There are better choices than others. Yes, so you can, not all carbs are created equal. Definitely not. I hope that's clear by the end of this podcast. Yeah. Another good question we had here from Claudia Streep. Claudia. She said, should your carb intake change by day depending if it's a heavy cardio day or not? God, what a good question, Claudia. Claudia. So she's referring to something that uh, it's another like dieting method car- called carb cycling, uh, which I did actually for a long time and it worked really well for me. Um, do you have to know, again, for most people, if you're just like a recreational exerciser, you don't have to worry about such things. However, I find it the reason I did it and why I think it works is that, and by the way, she said high cardio day. I would argue that on a high weight training day is when you really need those carbs. You don't really need carbs on for cardio. Yeah. Um, so what I would do is I would have my high carb days were my like heavy weight training days. What's cool about that is that you can really have the things that you really enjoy there. Like you can have your pasta, you can have your rice, pretty much guilt-free because I knew that the next day was gonna be a lower carb day, not a zero carb, a lower carb, and that's when I would restrict myself a little bit more. But then I knew that two days later or the next day, another high carb day was going. So that's a good way to like have your cake and eat it too. Um, and I think that's a, a nice little like motivational boost to people that are working out. Like, damn, I get to tomorrow's a workout day. I get to have a high calorie day, a high carb day. So it's like, you know, I like the people that don't like working out because working out guys should be something that you look forward to. But unfortunately, not all of us do. So it's like a little motivation, like, oh, if I, I get, work out, I get to have, I get to have a high calorie today. day. Exactly. So, you know. Yeah. The only thing that I'd say to be cautious of with that mentality is that it's not a reward. I hate the whole, like, we're not dogs. This isn't a, oh, I'm rewarding myself with like, oh, you know, treat yourself because I, I worked out. Because now you're, you're uh, training your mind to think that I must work out heavy to earn yeah. that ice cream. You're doing a reward. It's, it's and, a toxic yeah. mindset. You don't want to think like that. I'm going to reward. I can only, and then what happens is when you have that ice cream or somebody hands you a cookie and you haven't worked out, you feel so guilty yeah. because oh, my, you didn't earn it that yeah. day. It wasn't a, a high carb day. Yeah. So just, you know, a lot of this is psychological and just, you know, be cautious of that is all yeah. I'm saying. And the last question here is from Will, who's a, a big supporter. And we really appreciate him. Number one um, fan, baby. Damn, you're going to upset a lot of people. Um, he comments every time. He does. And he wants to know, why are carbs so tasty? You've stumped the expert, Will. And with that, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> I love him. I love carbohydrates. See you guys next week, where we'll be discussing something. Whatever you guys tell us to. Yeah. We are all. serving you. We are servants. We are human serviettes. This is an act of service. I'll serve as you.